Hey there, it's Natalie Topa again. Uh, this is my second of three videos here in the ecosystem restoration area where we've been working for the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is in Samburu County in Kenya, and we've been here with the World Food Program, community members, local government, uh, and universities from Kenya, Uganda, and Somalia, as well as staff from Kenya, Uganda, and Somalia. And I, I think I said also majorly participatory community members, very, very active. So earlier, I made a video showing the upper part of the system. And, you know, again, we're here on this, you know, the story sort of starts on the top of this mountain where there used to be homesteads that started to, great, to degrade the land, according to them. And they started to see major gully formation, trees falling into the gullies, and it just started to spread, which I'll show you later, uh, how that all has, actually, maybe this will be a four part video, <laughs> um, how that all has started to, actually, I'll walk over here. This is what it looks like. Massive, massive gullies forming all around. So we have, you know, goats, camels, cows that uh, graze here and trees are used for construction of homes, for charcoal, for domestic wood fuel and for, uh, for market. So, I mean, the land is literally just like melting away. If you can see that. Some of these gullies get unbelievably deep. And there you have Wamba Town. Now, I want to point out something which I pointed out in the last video, which is that, look at this, you know, the lot of deforestation, there are stumps everywhere. And soil loss, biodiversity loss. Is this climate change? Is this ecological degradation? Look at how this is so overly grazed. It just becomes like concrete hardscape where water picks up speed, turbidity, scouring action, and rips the soil off the top soil and veg look at that tree stump. Now, is this climate change? Could be. But if we just look over here, this mountain here is a conservancy. And no one is allowed to graze there or live there or to cut down trees. And it has a thick vegetative cover, all this tree canopy, shrubbery. And it's hard to see from this angle. I did make a, you know, I took a shot higher up. They don't have this degradation in these gullies over there. Look at that. That's where you get in the town and you have construction and so land is degraded. But at the base of this mountain, at the break of slope, you do not have this situation. Okay? So, why do we have climate change over here, but there's no climate change over there? It's because these disastrous events, extreme water behavior, is not only because of extreme rainfall patterns that are attributed to climate change, but it is also because of ecological health and the status of your ecosystem, okay? And your soils, your hydrology, okay? So the good news is we can fix this and make it like that. It takes time, it takes work, it takes resources, but it's doable. And that's really, really good news. So I took a video from up above where we've done a number of stone structures, hillside terracing, xi pits, uh, micro basins, which are, you know, stone enforced uh, half moons. We also here uh, have a, a very deep trench that was done with the excavator. Okay, so it's a long, deep trench at the base of the mountain. Continues also on this side. So many, many different protections and firewalls. As Voli says, uh, so it's just this integrated uh, pattern of many different types of technology, small scale structures, earthworks, stoneworks, or tree stumps. So here um, is an area where we worked, where we did a lot of different types of strategies. And here we've got, you know, this is what we call hillside terracing, where this, as it silts up, we can terrace off a bit. Here we've got some uh, stone-faced buns, big half moons. Okay, so number of measures, more 
hillside terracing. These are like uh, kind of large improved Zy pits where you can add uh, manure and there was a lot of manure going on here yesterday in various structures. So this is sort of a Zy pit area with buns, more stone face buns here. Hillside, for hillside terracing. So what we did actually, just so you know, we came in with a, a tractor to do ripping. So we just kind of, to do crust management and uncrust these soils a bit, because they're totally, you know, compacted hardscape like concrete, um, came in and just cut these strips on contour, okay? It has to be on contour. Otherwise you can cause major erosive activity and make the problem even worse. So really, really gotta be mindful of that. Ripped every, measured everything. We've been using laser levels, line levels, uh, A-frames, and uh, ripped those and then did these hillside terracing. Now we have a series of different types of, uh, different types of um, half moons, okay? So there's types with trenches and these can be adapted for different reasons for fodder production for agricultural production uh so here's some with holes uh in the sahel a lot of these is you know where you would put your millet put your fodder crops and then uh trees for example and then you have trenches right next to the trees this can become an agricultural little space and we did uh I worked yesterday to train the community on some homestead activities, which I'll make a video of. So here's another infiltration trench, trenches, holes. So these can be adapted in many different ways. You can do external zy pits. So all around the base have these same holes where you can do your maize, your millet, your sorghum, your fodder, your sugarcane, your C4 grasses. Okay, so here was a support to an existing tree. And then it goes on and on. So we continue down with other stone face buns and you'll see stone piles where the community will continue uh, making various structures. And yeah, so these are just examples of, you know, again, we're not strong arming nature. These are low tech process based measures. Low tech meaning, you know, locally available materials or materials, you know, that are found within this type of environment uh digging earthworks stoneworks uh we've got manure we've been using charcoal dust so many of these small scale structures and different technologies woven together can be much more effective than just doing large you know concrete uh types of interventions now what i would do and the work here is not yet done but you know we can see so much of this oops i almost just fell Look, this erosion that goes onto this side of the ridge versus this side. And here what I would do is make gentle rolling dips. Like a, imagine a speed bump, but very wide and smooth. So it's just like kind of a bump in the road that can direct water into these structures. Because right now, you know, the catchment for this hillside terrace is just the square footage meter from above which is you know, increasingly reduced as other measures are catching water. But we can increase the catchment. Imagine if you have a big rolling dip that captures these other sources of water coming through. So a wide, gentle, low, you know, you don't even have to perceive it as like a, a bump or a speed bump. It can be that gentle. So water coming down this hill will sort of hit that bump and gently roll in to this area. And you could even do a long trench on contour swale, you know, to deliver that water to the end uh, on contour. So there's just so many different ways. Process-based is the natural process, is the flow of water, nutrient, how that cycles. We're just trying to jump onto that bus, use that momentum and play, is it jujitsu? You know, Faj, is it jujitsu? When you, Aikido, when you use the force of your, of your opponent, yeah, Aikido. So <laughs> I guess we can call it Aikido, like ecological Aikido. <laughs> I should have been a dad, dad jokes. All right, so this is it. So that's sort of the hat, right? Let's call this the belly. The boots are down there and 
the idea would be over time to continue to cascade all of these types of interventions into the gullies, gully reshaping, terracing, so many different types of measures that can be done. But definitely starting at the top, the top, 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 top of the mountain, the same reason that you dry your head first when you come out of the shower rather than your feet is to get to the source. Otherwise, you're just going to keep drying your feet uh, without addressing the source of the problem. So that's it. This is video number two. They may end up being three or four, probably three. Okay, thank you.